GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge 38 Blessing of Life Blessing 13 Part 7 Hello everyone You are listening to GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge Series on 38 Blessing of Life Currently we have reached Blessing 13 and on this episode, we will be the last on this blessing. We will illustrate the example stories, understand more in depth on this blessing. Before we start, please subscribe, like, and share on our channel, Great Teaching Monk, available on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcast to help support our program and continue. If you have not listened to the previous episode just yet, we suggest you go back listen to them for more understanding and true on this blessing. If you are set, let us begin. Illustrative Examples Example number one. Metaphor Tongue and teeth in close proximity. When chewing one's food, if one's teeth and tongue fail to cooperate, beating one's tongue can be painful, enough to bring tears to the eyes. In the same way, if a husband and wife fail to be helpful and understanding to one another, Apart from making no progress in their married life, tears can be expected too in the long term. Example number two. Love beyond the grave. In the Tang Dynasty, an emperor who liked to perform a lot of merits. He had an empress who was not interested in any form of good deeds. Even when their country was invaded, the empress would not make any merit to help the situation. When her husband sent her to make a merit, she only pretended to go. When she came back, she lied, saying that she had already made the merit he sent her to do. The empress died in advance of the emperor. One day, when the emperor was sleeping, he dreamed he saw the empress as a ghost crying and calling for help. In the morning, the king does call an assembly. He asked the monks what could be done. The monks told him that he needed to make a merit and transfer the merit to the late empress. If the ghost was able to rejoice in the merit then, she would escape from her ghostly rebirth for something better. The emperor does organize a merit making fit for an emperor. He donated all the gold in his treasury, all the servants, all the carriage, chariots, and horses. He transferred merit for the next seven days. He slept again and dreamed that he saw the Empress now free from distress, thanking him. The tale of the Emperor was therefore told by many generations of Chinese until more recently the whole subject of transferring merit has been misunderstood because the normal people don't have the will of an Emperor to make merit. They burn paper money, paper Mercedes, paper servants, etc. to burn for their deceased relatives. It is tempting to think that nowadays, deceased Chinese relatives get only ashes. Example number three. Reluctant Marriage The Nun There was once a girl who had been going to the temple since the age of seven 
and had wanted to be a nun right from that time. Her parents didn't let her, saying that she must finish her studies. Thus, as a child, she did her duty to her best. When she finished her studies, she asked her parents' permission to become a nun, but they refused, saying that they wanted to see her marry. Thus she was married, and continued to do so the best of her duties as a faithful wife. One day, the husband was going to take his wife to a fair, and said to her, "Go and put on your best jewelry, so that you look best at the fair." The wife said, "I don't see the point on putting on any more jewelry than this." The husband asked, "Why not?" Because he has already bought so many nice items of jewelry for her to wear. The wife said that really none of us have any beauty. The skin on our body just hides the putrescence inside ourselves. The husband teased, with that sort of thinking, wouldn't you be better off as a nun? The wife replied, actually, it is my dearest wish if you would only give me your permission. The husband allowed her, and after becoming a bhikkhuni or a woman monk in Buddhism, within a very short space of time, she could become enlightened. Whatever duty she had to do in the past, she had always done her best. Thus, when she was a nun, before long, she could achieve what she had set out to do. Example number four: Reluctant marriage, Mahakasapa. Kasapa was the son of a millionaire. His future wife was also a daughter of a millionaire. Each of them lived in the distant cities. Two families had heard the reputation of the other family's child, and before long. They sent messengers to arrange the marriage. Neither the bride nor the groom were interested in marriage. When they were both forced to marry, then they did not rebel. However, because both of them were more interested in the dharma, after they were married, they always slept in separate rooms. Later, when both of their parents had passed away. They persuade each other to ordain. The husband become a monk. The wife become a nun. They left their house, gave away all their possessions. When they came to a fork in the road, they agree that if they went together, they might cause gossip. So they decide to go their separate ways. Before long. Both of them met with those who could teach them the Dharma, and both could become arahants with ease. Example number five: Mary spied beyond the grave. There was once a good husband and wife. The wife was barren and felt sorry for the childless husband, so she found a mistress for him. Both the wife and the mistress were good friends, but all of us still have defilements and cannot be trusted. When the mistress got pregnant, the husband was so pleased that he lavished more affection on his mistress than on his wife. This made the wife envious. Because she thought to herself, even when the child has not yet been born, my husband is already treating me with indifference. If the child is born, the husband will certainly treat me with no more respect than a pig or a chicken around the house. Thus, she thought time is of the essence, and found some poison that would cause abortion and trick the mistress into drinking it. The first child was aborted. 
when she became pregnant a second time. The wife did the same again. By the third pregnancy, the mistress worked out what was happening and refused to take the medicine. Thus, there was a fight between the wife and the mistress. The wife killed the mistress who was almost defenseless because of her pregnancy. When the husband saw what had happened, he killed his wife. Before the mistress died, she was so vengeful that she made a vow that she would kill and eat all the children of that wife in every future lifetime. When the mistress died, she was reborn as a cat in the same house. The wife was born as a chicken in the same house. However, many eggs the chicken laid, the cat would eat them all. The chicken was thus angry, and before it died, it made the vow to eat all the children of the cat in the next lifetime. The chicken was reborn as a tiger, and the cat was reborn as a deer. The tiger ate all the baby deer. This carried on the same until the final lifetime, when the wife was born as a man eating all grass. The mistress was born, married to the same husband again. The man eating ogres ate up the first and second children of the couple. When the third child was born, the mother realized in time and quickly took the child to where the Lord Buddha was staying. As soon as the man eating ogres followed the mother into the temple, its temptation to eat people disappeared. The Buddha summoned both of the two. The Buddha looked at their previous lives and made the pictures of their past visible for others to see as well. Having seen the pictures, both of the women knew the reason for everything and so were able to forgive one another. The ogres was able to become the stream enterer. The mistress attained faith in the triple gem. The ogress didn't know how to earn her living, so the mistress bought her home and looked after her like a daughter. The ogress knew in advance what the seasons of the year would be like, whether there would be a drought or flood, and the forecast she passed on to her caretakers, and they were able to become wealthy. The moral of this story is, don't go looking for mistresses to help any situation because we all still have defilements. That's it, everyone. These are all the stories that could help you to understand more in depth on Blessing 13. We will continue on the next blessing, Blessing 14. Don't leave your work undone. Why don't leave our work undone is part of the blessing in our life. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share on our podcast channel, Great Teaching Monk, available on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcast. Until then. <laughs>